Dear friends, I'm very pleased to be able to virtually welcome you to the mechanism and the Office of the Prosecutor. My name is Sergio Bramertz. I've served as the Chief Prosecutor of the Mechanism since 2016, and I was the Chief Prosecutor of the ISTY from 2008 until its closure in 2017. The Hague International Open Day has always been an important opportunity for my office to share more about our work with you. It is wonderful to see that this tradition is continuing despite the COVID-19 pandemic. As you would probably expect, the pandemic has had an impact on our work as international prosecutors, just as it has impacted all of us. Like many of you, we began working remotely as best as we could, with the added challenge that we have offices in four countries on two continents. Traveling to search for our fugitives was impossible. Our trials and appeals were delayed for some time, but have now luckily resumed. But a couple of months ago, you may have seen that despite COVID-19, we achieved a major success. On 16 of May, my office, working closely with French gendarmes, as well as partners from the UK, Belgium, Interpol, Europol and others, arrested Felicien Cabuga in a suburb north of Paris in France. Kabuga was one of the world's most wanted fugitives for more than two decades. Perhaps you have seen, and if not, you should watch, a recent Netflix documentary that ranked him together with drug cartel leaders and mafia bosses. My office indicted Felicia Kabuga in 1997 for genocide and other crimes committed during the Rwandan genocide. As you will know, the 1994 genocide against the Tutsi in Rwanda led to the slaughter of more than 800,000 innocent civilians. Survivors were the victims of many other crimes, including widespread rape during the genocide. Our prosecutors allege that Kabuga played a leading role in the genocide, including by providing financial support to groups of killers known as the Inter Hamwe, and through his role overseeing extremist radio and television stations which incited murder of Tutsi civilians before and during the genocide. Although Kabuga was indicted 23 years ago, he evaded justice until recently. Our investigators tracked him as he thought to hide in Europe first, then later in Africa. However, he always remained one step ahead of us, relying on protection that he purchased from powerful officials. But a couple of years ago, we decided to take a fresh approach. Using lessons from tracking war criminals in the former Yugoslavia, we created a team of investigators, analysts, lawyers, and diplomats, and focused on advanced tracking techniques, including financial and telecommunications analysis. With these new tools, by early this year, we were increasingly confident that Kabuga was living in either France or Belgium and was being supported by family members living here in Europe. And so when in the early morning of the 16th of May, French authorities launched a sophisticated arrest operation at our request, we were not surprised that after 23 years, Kabuga was finally found. Arresting one of the world's most wanted fugitives was just the first step. Now, my office must prosecute him. The case against Kabuga is one of the most complex in the history of international criminal justice. It will be a significant challenge for us as prosecutors, particularly proving Kabuga's alleged leadership role in the crimes. I visited Kigali, Rwanda, just a few days ago. Due to the pandemic, this was my first visit since Kabuga was arrested. As I met with the victims to talk about the arrest and the crisis, I was reminded against why our work is so important. For the international community, Kabuga's arrest was an important sign that those responsible for the most horrific crimes will be brought to justice. But for the victims of Kabuga's crimes, his arrest had even more meaning. For them, the genocide was not something that happened 26 years ago, but a fact that continues to shape their lives even today. And for many victims, Kabuga personified the hatred, the genocide and all they suffered. With his arrest, they told me, they thought that even the most rich and powerful men will not escape justice forever, that they can be held accountable for their crimes, 
and that knowledge helps them in some way to move forward with their lives. While the Kabuga case is now perhaps the mechanism's most well-known investigation, my office continues to prosecute other senior leaders for war crimes, crimes against humanity, and genocide. The case against General Radko Mladic is nearing the end of the appeals phase following his conviction and sentence of life imprisonment and trial. The Stanisic and Sematovic case, which concerns crimes committed in Croatia and Bosnia and Herzegovina by members of the Serbian security services, is nearing the end of trial, and we expect a judgment next year. And with the arrest of Kabuga, we are also redoubling our efforts to locate the remaining six Rwandan genocide fugitives, the most notorious of whom is Potais Emperania, commander of the Presidential Guard, who we allege is responsible for serious crimes, including the murder of 10 Belgian peacekeepers in April 1994. The work of international criminal justice takes time. Like Kabuga, many war criminals can live as fugitives for years, if not decades. Our trials are massive and complex because the crimes were massive and complex. But ultimately, victims can see men like Radko Mladic and Radovan Karadzic or Filesian Kabuga and Protais and Piranha held accountable. What we as prosecutors need perhaps more than anything else is public support for our work, from the victims on whose behalf we fight, but also the general public and governments around the world. Without that support, we would never be able to succeed in this difficult work. That is why Just Peace Initiative is so important. The Netherlands and the city of The Hague have always been among the strongest supporters of our work. On behalf of the mechanism, I would like to again thank all of you for interest and wish you all the best in these difficult times. Thank you. <laughs>